All right, let's get on with the carburetor issue on the bus. We seem to have a plethora of these carburetors here. So uh, that should be some indicator. We have one, two, three. Three of them that are replacement carburetors. The uh, replacement carburetor that comes with the adapter. And usually what they're trying to do with these carburetors is adapt the uh, early model carburetor to the late model intake manifold. See if I have a big one here, even. I don't think I do. Maybe. Yeah, here's the big carburetor that originally comes on. Like if you have a, a I want to say 72 on Super Beetle, standard Beetle, it'll be the uh, 34 pick. Let me look at the number just to, to verify that. The 34 pick Sol X. And uh, this is a pretty good carburetor. A lot of people complain about a Super Beetle bog on these, but these are very adjustable. They have an adjustable accelerator pump on this side. Over here. So you can make the accelerator pump adjustment, but usually the adjustment you need to make is the jet, which most people don't ever take the top of the carburetor off. So our single port won't accept this carburetor. We have a much smaller diameter. We take the 30 pick on the uh, early model Volkswagens. <clears throat> so we have, uh, this is the culprit off the bus. Yeah. This is the new replacement carburetor that most everybody goes and buys. It says Solex on it and it's, uh, uh, what does it say on there? This is Solex H3031 pick. And it comes with an adapter plate usually. There's the uh, adapter plate on the bottom of it there. I call that the restrictor plate. You pop this on your Super Beetle and uh, you don't have the bog anymore. But you don't have any power either. It's nice and smooth. So uh, they used to be pretty good carburetors. You could buy one of those, bolt them on, trouble free, you know, pop it on there and it would run fine. That's why I sort of bought this one. But uh, they seem to have a little bit of an issue with uh, draining fuel in the motor after you shut the, the motor off. And the other problem is, is that the carburetor's lean. You know, why the choke operation's happening. This one works fine. When the choke's on in the morning, the, uh, the carburetor is lean, lean, lean. So what we need to do is go in here and increase the main jet. And uh, we'll take the top and see what we got in here. I got a few parts for this. I don't have any carburetor kits, ironically. But I should be able to piece something together here. So let me move the camera. Do you need something? I was just going to give you a message from Ken. Wait. From Ken? Volkswagen Ken? Yeah. What's up? He wants to talk to you about rehabbing a transmission. He said he has two of them and hopefully one is usable. Um, would you be able to help him make one good one? Yeah, just tell him to pick a weekend. We'll, uh, I got a kit here in stock, I think. He just wants to reseal it. We talked about it. Yeah, he said you did. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, Decided we're going to go with this carburetor or not. First thing we'll do is take the top of it off. Now you don't have to take the top to change the main jet. My roll around stool here. Got a couple wrenches. Let me make sure you guys are in frame. Not too bad. I apologize. I'm an amateur at this video stuff. But anyway, it's uh. You can pull the inspection plug out right here. It's a 14 millimeter. And you can pull the main jet out of here. But that's not going to solve our uh, flooding issue we have. So we'll pull the inspection plug out, but we're going to go ahead and take the top off of this one. I've already got the gas emptied out. I didn't rejet this, I just put it on the motor stock. Uh, I had mentioned that I'd like to put K-drones on this, and uh, if I keep it, I'm definitely going to put K-drones on before I make any kind of road trip. 
And uh, Greg said that the guys at Caddyshack have an intake manifold if I'm interested in it, so I might give them a call. And, but I want to do this first because a lot of guys aren't going to go to Cadron's, you know, you're going to have this carburetor and you have this issue because I've gotten several emails about guys that have encountered this problem and more guys are going to go out and buy the stock carburetor than get Cadron's. And a lot of times it's because they don't want the uh, trouble of dual carbs, but you still get this headache. So I always say go with the dual carbs even though you have to rejet them. And that's why a lot of times, you know, they don't run good or people will have bad things to say. They'll try to buy them right out of the box. And you can't do that. You're either going to have to reject the carburetor or you're going to have to have somebody tune it for you because that's the heat issue. So we can see this carburetor is new, but you can see how uh, tarnished the needle and seat is here. It's not in really good shape. The ethanol fuel is attacking the brass. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> that's not good. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. We'll have to find a needle and seat and uh, fix that. You can see that's very uh, tarnished. And this is probably one of the main reasons that people are having trouble with the uh, needles and seats sticking. Not so much the height of the float, but uh, the needle and seat sticking. They do have these shims you can buy or get. That's an aluminum shim and it's twice as thick as the original one, which will lower the float level. I keep those around <clears throat> and they work pretty good. And it just uh, sets your float level down a little lower in the bowl, keep from sloshing or draining out of the venturi after you shut the uh, motor off. And what I mean by venturi is the booster tube here. So I'm going to take the gasket off, see if we got another one of these. Might have one. We've got a top gasket here, so that's good. We'll pull the little dog bone out. That'll let the uh, float come out. A little scribe. All this stuff seems to be uh, reacting to the fuel to me. The dog bone's usually not tight in there. And uh, this one's tight. So. And the float just pops out after you get that dog bone out of there. Take that out. You can see the bottom of the carburetor's clean. You know, we're not having a contamination issue from the tank or anything. So uh, it's definitely a jetting issue. And then the other thing we found was the, uh, the needle and seat was corroded from the fuel. The bowl doesn't seem to be being attacked, although it does have a powdery substance in it, you know? Not too bad though. Our ball's still loose on the accelerator pump. Doesn't seem to be leaking. Let's get the jet out of here and see what we got. Regular screwdriver, we're going through the inspection hole on the side here. We got it loose, now we'll just turn the carburetor and drop the jet out. The jet's showing, uh, showing sign, signs of the black uh, funk on it just like the needle and seat looks like it's attacking the brass and the carburetor to me the fuel so. jet is uh, unrestricted it's not blocked and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, these are for cleaning tips on uh, acetylene and oxygen welding sets but it is a good way to measure what jet you have and where you can go uh, some people say it's crude, but it works. And you can pick a set up cheap. Or you can buy a drill set. I just have the drills that I need. If I had a whole set, I would confuse myself. Let's see what we got here. Now this will affect the gas mileage of your uh, gas mileage guy. Probably shouldn't do this. On the other hand, if you leave it like it is, 
eventually you're going to get really good gas mileage when it's uh, no longer running in your driveway from the heads melting off of it. So. This uh, bus also has a header on it, and the heads are ported, even though they're single port heads. They have a little port work done on them, so it's probably leaner than the uh, stock 1600 out there. It might be closer. So we'll see what that does for us. This is experimental. Try to drop the jet back through here and uh, hope it lands in the right spot here. There we go. see we'll use this one right here just happen to have one ready mm -hmm. we're gonna lower it to a little bit we're gonna take the needle and seat down just a tad it's not a drag bus if it uh is short on fuel we'll know right away and we can just pop top off and uh, correct it but uh that, that fuel running down in your bus motor after it's uh, shut off is way no good for it. No bueno. Because uh, that's washing down your cylinders and uh, causing all kinds of issues. All right, we got our jet drilled. We got it reinstalled. Let's go ahead and put our plug back in the side. You want to make sure that you have your aluminum uh, washer on there. You don't want any fires, you know. Anytime you mess with fuel, you want to make certain that uh, you don't have any leaks when you're done. This is a 13 and I have a 14 or a half inch. There we go. Alright, we have our plug reinstalled. I'd like to have some fuel up here to test the accelerator pump, which I don't have because I want to give it a little more squirt. But we'll go ahead and uh, button this back up. Let's put our uh, float back in there. All I've run in this bus is high test too. I haven't put any regular fuel in there. And uh, all this corrosion's come from the high test fuel. Dog bone. There you go. You can bend the tab on the uh, float if you like to lower the uh, float level that way, but they are very sensitive and they can't break. So I find that it's better to shim the needle and seat down rather than uh, mess with that. WD. I'll make sure this choke's working good, nice and free. When these get sticky, sometimes you can just tap the end of the shaft there with a hammer. Make sure that's nice and free though, it's important. Alright, here we go. I'll put the top back on, we got the float in there, got the dog bone, got everything in there. Open the throttle up a little bit and uh, put the top back on. Lid, whatever you want to call it. Go, get your linkage right.
diffuser. Let's see what's going on with this linkage here. It's always good to have a couple carburetors laying around. And it definitely goes behind this. I'll have to play with the top a little bit there. It likes to get caught on the uh, squirter. gotten bent on this thing somehow. This probably has something to do with the choke not working properly. There we go. There we go. That's what we want. What's up, buddy? Grabbing tools. Grabbing tools. All righty. I'm going to put the lid back on now that we got the linkage straightened out there. It's on, it's gathering and stuff this symbol a little. What is that thing? You won't tell me what kind of motor it is. Keep me in the dark. Anyway, there we go. We need to find a spring. Spring ding ding. Just this choke. linkage issue on this baby. Huh? There you go. So when it's cold you want to adjust that to where it just shuts. You can see it's open there. Shut. That's perfect. And this little electric choke, as it warms the coil up, it'll uh, release the spring tension and the choke will open. setting so we'll give this a try we'll reinstall it and we'll go for a ride and see if that helps anything 
Maron. What's up, buddy? Need assembly lube. Assembly lube? I don't use assembly lube. Really? Really? Look at his face. So it's not just you guys. I don't use assembly lube. Can you give me the face? Why? <laughs> well, is there a little Japanese guy that puts assembly lube on it every time you start the motor? Well, no, I have special oil. Special oil, I put on motor for start up. See that, that makes sense. Okay, you put assembly lube, it make motor real draggy. You don't know if something wrong with motor or not. No assembly lube, motor smooth. You feel problem. Assembly lube, motor turn like turtle. How about you come for my business together? I'll put your business together. There's the lube right there. It says hyper lube right on it. So what kind of motor is that we're putting together in there? SR20. SR20? Yep. What's the other last part that they always throw in there? DET. DET. So building my first SR20 DRT. DET. DET. So you can't even say it, so you know it's going to run good. Cam electronic fuel injection turbo. I'll tell you one thing. It's a sweet little power pack, man. It makes some really good power, and it's super lightweight. Aluminum block, aluminum head, five main bearings. Super strong. Got a girdle from the factory on the main bearings. All kinds of cool stuff. But anyway, that's another video. So uh, let me turn this off. We'll get that back on. And uh, you Volkswagen guys are going, what is he talking about? So uh, we'll give that a try. We'll give it a test drive. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.